Most of what we have discussed so far covers how to clean up and perfect your vocal performances. The next thing we want to look at is vocal sound design. Your voice is one of the most intimate aspects of your being. It is as unique as your fingerprint or your retina. The pattern of frequencies in your voice that makes you sound like you, called overtones or vocal formants, is largely retained when doing vocal sound design. The first commercial device to give musicians the ability to freely trigger pre-recorded vocals was the Mellotron. Created in England in the 1960s, the Mellotron used tape loops controlled by a piano keyboard. In the 1980s, digital versions of this technology became available, which could easily vary the playback speed of user-recorded audio in relation to a piano keyboard. This was the beginning of sample drops as we know it, but also led to lots of creative vocal sound design. With microprocessor advances in the 1990s, Software-based samplers started to become available on desktop computers. I used Logic's EXS sampler to create a synthetic OO vocal sound from Jesse's lead vocal that since the overtones from Jesse's voice are still embedded in this sample, it's more unique than using a similar sound from a sample library and blends beautifully with the track. Here's the section of the song where I use Jesse's voice to create a synthesized vocal sound. So you must ask, why have we not changed our mind? Now let's hear that soloed. Notice that I placed some auto tune on this channel to help the sound sit better in the track, as well as a flanger to give it a nice wide stereo spread. Let's take a closer look at the original sound. The way in which you get the audio into your particular sampler will vary from DAW to DAW, so just have a look online to figure it out. The reason your voice will sound like a chipmunk if you play an octave higher on a sampler is because the physical dimensions of the formants are also changed by half. For this reason, you can use Melodyne to move input pitches as far up and down as you like to create unique harmonies, for example, without changing the dimensions of the formants. First, let's hear what this sounds like. How long have you been drifting? No, oh, how long have I been hiding? That sounds pretty cool. Let me show you how I did that. First, I figured out what notes I would like to use to create the vocal harmony. Next, I made several copies of the lead vocal. I placed Melodyne across those tracks, and then I dragged the original lead vocal part up and down to the notes I figured out on the piano keyboard. A popular plugin and hardware effect that often blurs the line between background vocals and sound design is the vocorder. The vocorder works by splitting a modulator signal, usually the human voice, into many frequency bands and then using those bands to drive a bandpass filter. The reason the vocorder lends itself well to backing vocal sounds is that the sound source for the vocorder, also called the carrier, is most often a polyphonic synthesizer, which is easy to play harmonies on. I use this in the breakdown chorus and outro choruses of Villains of Our Own Stories. Here's the breakdown chorus. Say, how long have you been drifting? Here's how I created it. First, I played the part into the vocorder using a MIDI keyboard while triggering the carrier signal, which is a polyphonic synthesizer modulated by Jesse's lead vocal. It's actually two vocorders layered in octaves. Here's the higher octave. Here's the lower octave. And here's the layered sound. The talk box has a similar sound to the vocorder. However, the process by which it achieves its results is different. In a talk box, a vocalist places a tube in his or her mouth. 
The carrier sound is then sent through that tube and conceptually takes the place of the vocal cords. The vocalist can then shape the overtones of the carrier sound using the same gestures as speech. Compared to the vocorder, the talk box has a more analog sound to it. Formant shifts from the mouth, tongue, and cheeks work best on a monophonic sound source, like an electric guitar or a solo synthesizer. Therefore, to get the best results for backing vocals, you will have to track each pass independently. But the results are really cool sounding. Okay, so here's a talk box. This is from a company called MXR. They make lots of cool guitar pedals. And we can also use this with our synthesizer. The talk box allows us to take a sound and amplify it and send it through this tube. The sound that we're going to use is the synthesizer sound from this Korg. And I'm going to take gestures from my speech and impart those gestures to the sound of the synthesizer. I'm going to play in a harmony for the chorus based on a part that I've already written out. Let's see what it sounds like. Don't forget to hit the like and sub buttons for these videos.